Hi, my name is Jeff Demore, and today I'm going to show you how the air-loaded adjust-to-pull anti-wrinkle system works. We receive this material, it's a non-woven material, and we place it on our test stand. Um, we have it on our air shaft, and the air shaft is uh, loaded with air, so when you inflate the air shaft, now that core is locked to the air shaft. Um, this air shaft is mounted in ball bearings. And then we also have a, an air operated uh, tension brake here that's set extremely low. It's probably at its, its lowest tension setting, as, as low as we can get it. Um, on the machine, we're coming off the unwind. We're going to go around this idler roll, and we have it going across two idler rolls. Now this, <clears throat> this roller here, everything in this machine is lined up. The, the rollers are all lined up properly. Uh, they're parallel, and they're um, uh, 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 balanced and they're also uh, level in the machine except for this roll. This roll we've actually skewed on purpose so if you take a look at where this mounting block is mounted relative to this machine frame you'll see that there's a, a good amount of distance here but on the other side of the machine that mounting block comes up flush to the machine frame so what we've done is we've skewed this roll on purpose to this roll, so as we're unwinding, um, I'm trying to generate wrinkles here so that you can see how the adjusted pulls, which are mounted right here, they'll pull the wrinkles out. So hopefully, um, within this video, we'll show you that. These are the adjusted pull anti-wrinkle system, and this is our newest model. It's air-loaded. So the uh, nipping action of the adjusted pulls is controlled with uh, an air valve. So you flip this air valve and they open and close with air. The air pressure that goes into the air cylinder that's loading the adjusted pulse is, is adjustable with uh, this um, pressure regulator. So it's a pressure regulator, and they're mounted on both, both adjusted pulse, the left and the right hand set, both have the same assembly. So you, the, when, they, when they come to you, they do come with the valve and the pressure regulator. Pressure regulator allows you to adjust very accurately how much uh, loading you have in the nip assembly. You can adjust it to have very minimal pressure. Um, I don't know if you can zoom in here, but you'll see as I turn this knob, you'll see that pressure go down. And you can adjust it to very minimal, t very minimal pressure. So that would be a very, very, that's probably less than 5 PSI. Right now I have them set, they should be set around 30 PSI to start. And then you can also turn them up to about 90 PSI is about the maximum. Um, the, we're going to come out of the adjust to pull assembly, we're going to go around another idler roll, around another idler roll, and another idler roll, and then we're going to come on to the rewind stand. This is where we're going to rewind the material, and these are CACs, uh, safety chucks that holds the rewind shaft in place. The adjustable, this adjustable assembly has um, the uh, mounting bracket. It's an optional mounting bracket. This, is, this system has the optional mounting bracket that allows you to adjust the angle simply by turning a knob. So you can adjust how aggressive these adjustables are by turning a knob. And there's a dial indicator on this um, a system that allows you to set very accurately the angle of each nip of each nip in the adjustable pull system. Um, I'm going to set this at about 15 degrees. 15 degrees is a good place to start. I haven't run this material. This is going to be the first time. So we're going to start it at 15 degrees and see how aggressive the adjustable pulls are on the web. They should be relatively aggressive. So that's set to about 15 degrees. The other side is already set to about 15 degrees. I have the air pressure on both systems set to about 30 PSI. Um, again, we can go down to about 5 PSI, probably max out about 90 PSI. But I'm going to start at 30 PSI, see how well it grabs and grips the web. And um, so we're going to start up the machine.
as I said, I don't have a whole lot of material, so I'm just going to run it real slow for now so we can see the action on the adjuster pulse. So, if you look here, um, you'll see that there are some wrinkles in the web, and then there's some slight wrinkles in the web on the edges and across the web here. And what we're going to do is we're going to adjust. Uh, you can also you can see the wrinkles coming across the top if you look th across the top there. And you'll see if you'll also see wrinkles over here. If you look across here, you'll, get, you'll see some wrinkles forming there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the adjuster pulls and you'll see what they do for the web. So I'm going to turn on one side. And I'm going to turn on the other side. And now you can see on the output side of the adjuster pulls, this is completely wrinkle free. So if you look at the top here, there are some wrinkles coming across the top here. The spreading action does start to take place. The anti-wrinkle action does start to take place in the entry span to the adjuster poles. And then on the output side, you can see that the web, the, 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 um, the non-woven is perfectly flat. And that's the effect that the adjuster poles have on the web. Again, you'll see some wrinkles up here. These are actually creases. And it's doing a, a very good job at even pulling out creases, which is very difficult to pull out creases out of anything. Um, as you can see, I'm not sure how it would come out in the video, but as you can see, it's kind of like a reverse hourglass. The web is actually stretching a little bit as it's going through the adjuster pulls. So it's getting a little wider. Now we could actually adjust the um, aggression. So I, I think I can make it pull even a little harder by adjusting the angle, now this side is set to about 20 degrees, I'm going to set the other side to about 20 degrees, now you can see it really pulls, so it's be, it has a very high level of aggression on the web. You may not need that, so we can tie, turn that down, I can set it to about 5 degrees, And I'll set this side to about five degrees. And you'll see that it's a lot, lot less pull, but it also still pulls wrinkles out. So you have that adjustment available with the adjuster pulls. Um, if I make them parallel to the web, they won't have, you'll see that, you'll probably see the wrinkles come back because they won't really have any effect on the web. So those are relatively parallel to the web, so they're not really pulling, they're really not doing any pulling that could probably. So they're, you're going to have more wrinkles in your web at that point. Um, so I'm going to go back to about 15 degrees. Well, that was pretty aggressive, so maybe I'll set it around 10 degrees, well, 15. Again, I haven't run this material yet, so we're just uh, experimenting at this point. So you even see some creases. You can see these wrinkles coming across. And you'll see that the adjusted pulls really do a good job of pulling those out. Um, the other good thing about the air loaded units is that it's very easy to thread up. So if you, if you shut them off or if you open them up and you go to thread your material through, it's, it's as simple as that. You just open them up, thread your material straight through the adjusted pulls, close them. And now they're threaded up. And you can see that, again, you can see how much it's pulling the wrinkles out of your material. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. If you don't opt for the, the mounting brackets, they are optional. You can buy just the adjuster pulls, but in order to make the angle adjustment, you have to do that from this bolt. So this bolt would be bolted directly to your machine frame, and you would have to loosen this bolt up and then twist the adjustables to whatever angle you want them at. The other advantage to this system is that it's very easy to adjust for web width. So when your web width changes, you simply loosen that nut and you can slide the, the bracket anywhere you want to adjust for any web width changes. In, without the bracket, you would have to have a separate hole for each web width or in your machine frame, or you'd have to have a slot of some sort so that you could loosen the bolt and slide the adjustables themselves along the slot and then tighten them back up again. So uh, we do have some material left, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this machine at a higher speed so you can see how much uh, anti-wrinkle aggression. The other thing is, one of the things you'll notice, you'll see how these units work. If I shut off this side, you can now see this web is, is moving sideways because this one adjuster pull is engaged and it's literally pulling the web to one side. So when the, both adjuster pulls are engaged, they're having that effect on the web. They're pulling from both sides. You can see how far the web has moved into that adjuster pull. And you can see how far the web has moved out of this one. And you can see in the wind, you can see where it's being pulled to one side because I only have one side engaged. That's exactly how the adjuster pulls work. That's the concept behind that. So when I engage that, now you're gonna see this web is being pulled back and then it'll, because each side is, uh, angle is the same and the air pressure is approximately the same, everything centers going through the adjuster pulls. So when you're in the running condition, you can adjust these adjuster pulls to give you more or less anti-wrinkle aggression, but you're going to want them set at relatively the same angle because if one side is set at a greater angle than the other side, it will have a tendency to pull it to one side because that's the concept of, in which they work. Since we have some more material, I'm gonna run the machine at a higher speed and we'll see what happens. That right there is about the maximum speed of the machine. As you can see, you have wrinkles coming into the adjuster pulls. On the output side of the adjuster pulls, all those wrinkles are gone on the output side. And we're just going to let that run out. You can see a lot of wrinkles up in this area, up, up, up here. You can see all those wrinkles being pulled out in this entry span to the adjuster pulls. So you want to have a nice long entry span if you can. There, a lot of the anti-wrinkle aggression takes place in this span. The longer this is, the more pull you'll get. But you'll see on the output side, the web is nice and flat. So there's a lot of wrinkles going across here, and it's flat on the output side. And we're just going to, again, we're just going to let this roll run out. Rolls run out. I'm going to shut off the machine. Um, now, when you go to rethread your machine, again with the air loaded units, you just flip them open on both sides. At that point, you run your material straight through the uh, adjuster pulls, load them back up, and away you go. Now, we also have um, available our spring loaded adjuster pulls. They look very similar to the air loaded but instead of having an air cylinder, there is a spring here. In order to thread them up, they're a little harder. You have to manually open them, feed the material through, and then allow them to close. The pressure adjustment in the nip is nowhere near as accurate as the air-loaded units. It's only a spring. As you turn this knob, 
you compress this spring, and the more spring compression you have, the harder these are put together. So the adjustment is nowhere near as fine, and you don't have as much range as you do with the air-loaded unit. For a light material like this, I would absolutely recommend the air-loaded units. It allows you more adjustment, also very easy to thread up. Thank you for watching the video. I hope I've answered any questions you may have.